Good people, hello, I'm Dimitri. Keyboards have been good this year, just like you. We had a pretty decent variety in terms of gaming, mainstream, and custom keyboards. And so, just like with Gaming Mice, you can check out that compilation right here. Today we're doing our best keyboards of 2020. Now I've teamed up with our good friends, Random Frank P and Batsy Tech to discuss about our favorite keyboards of the year. This should be fun. As usual, everything will be listed in the description below for you to venture out, see what's available, see what's in your budget, see what you want and need. So enjoy. You know, 2020 has been tough. Let's not make our components suffer. Let them breathe, let them relax. With the Eclipse Air Series by Fantex, your hardware will appreciate the size options and you the experience. Available for every build at different scales and price points too. They all share the ultra fine mesh front panels engineered specifically for best airflow with perforations of one millimeter that also act as a dust filter. Check out the P300A, P360A, P400A and P500A down below. The perfect eclipse for 2020. All right, so first let's start with the small guys, the Razer Huntsman Mini. And I feel like this is an important 60% keyboard in the mainstream space, just because this form factor is generally reserved for the custom community. And the most important upgrade here that we received are the new Gen 2 optical linear switches. They fixed the pinging from the first gen switches on the Huntsman TE by both lubing and adding silicon dampeners to the keyboard. So it's smoother and sounds so much better. I still love the double shot PPT keycaps with a nice texture and clean font, the removable USB-C cable, double angle feet. Now what I don't like is the price, which is above the Duck E1 to Mini, which is its main competition. And after having used something more solid like the Mecha Mini with a cast aluminum frame, the light nature of the Huntsman Mini just, it doesn't really live up to the price. Stepping things up to a 65% layout, we've got the brand new Streak 65 from Fnatic. Now I did not expect to like this keyboard as much as I do, but it clearly shows they've thought about this one from every angle. It's a really compact frame, similar to a 60% keyboard and footprint on your desk, but we get the additional functionality with the arrow keys and that side row. It is 48% smaller in volume versus their own TKL keyboard, thanks to the low profile keycaps and their new Fnatic speed low profile switches. And these have become like my go-to for gaming because the initial force to press the switch seems to be just right to never accidentally press the key with the weight of your fingers. That is a major win in my books, especially because coming from speed switches, other light and fast actuation switches, I'm always accidentally pressing them just with the weight of my fingers with the Fnatic Streak 65. None of that. Also, the looped stabilizers here are phenomenal. Ergonomically, it's extremely comfortable as well. The USB-C port is always welcome. Plus, despite the light body, it actually has a better quality feel versus the Huntsman Mini. Now, a little curveball your way, let's hear from Eber about his favorite notebook keyboard. Hey Dimitri, so to answer your question, my pick for the best notebook keyboard from 2020 is the XPS 15 and 17. Now I've been using the XPS 17 as my daily driver for the past few months uh, to edit photos, videos, and most importantly, write scripts for videos as well. And having switched from my Razorblade 15, the difference has been night and day. I love the simple layout of the keyboard. The font choice is nice and minimal. The keys are appropriately spaced out. And the best part is the typing experience. Uh, there's a good amount of travel distance and I like the feedback that it provides. It doesn't feel clicky, but when you bottom out, it's sort of a smooth transition and I really, really enjoy typing on this thing. Uh, let's take a listen to how it sounds. So that's my pick for the best notebook keyboard for 2020. 
Thanks, Dimitri. Thanks, buddy. Now let's move on to the full size category, which is not something that I particularly enjoy. I prefer a smaller, compact TKL as my maximum size, but I 100% enjoy my time with the Mountain Everest Max. So first of all, it's a TKL body at its core with hot swappable switches, a USB-C connection, an aluminum top plate, and an actual USB 3 hub that is amazing for transferring media with a separate numpad that you can install on either side of the keyboard to fit your play style or even use this cable to attach the numpad to the body for even more flexibility. Absolutely love this customization with the USB-C connectivity, plus the screen buttons are a nice touch for macro customization. Furthermore, we get this media dial that can be attached on either left or the right with some cool options to display on the screen and use it to change your lighting or your volume controls. You can show system usage numbers and even set a timer. And Mountain is definitely in my good books because as a young brand they seem to be listening to reviewers and their customers on what to change in the software for example what to bring in for the next revision of the the products and so i feel like their you know their initial releases are well thought out and not just like a a quick hit. Moving on to another full-size keyboard, here we have the Corsair K100 RGB, and this one is a true full-size flagship from Corsair. It's a beautiful keyboard all around, actually the most RGB they've ever put in a keyboard, with double shot PBT keycaps, a standard bottom row, comfy wrist rest, Elgato Stream Deck compatible side macro keys, and this IQ dial that is good for switching profiles and some other specific functionality like scrolling, switching apps, and brightness control. But really the most interesting thing about the keyboard are the new OPX switches. They are optical and the keyboard has a 4000 Hz polling rate, which is the fastest on any mainstream keyboard to date. And this is important because this is where we're heading in the gaming industry. So lower you know, latency, faster refresh, and Corsair is already future-proofing their keyboard that no one else can kind of match up to and like Razer is going to be launching their mouse with 8000 hertz polling rate and Corsair is already future proofing their K100 for many many years to come. Now before we get into my honorable mentions for 2020 let's hear from our awesome guests Ren and Frank P and Bad C Tech. Yo what is up good people I'm Brian P from Bad C Tech. Dimitri asked me to come by and talk about my favorite keyboard of 2020. This was a big year. A lot of stuff came out, but nothing impressed me quite as much as the NK65 entry from Novel Keys. The simple geometry, the polycarbonate case, the heavy duty amount of sound dampening, all add up to a bare bones board where you're getting a ton of value for $95. These aren't in stock very often or for very long and for good reason. There's a lot to like here. I own three of these, all different colors, and at least one of them always stays in my permanent rotation. Because these boards are hot swap, you can put in whatever switches you like from the most basic to something a little higher end like these lubed polar pandas here. 65% layout is easily my favorite of the small form factors, though it does mean that you're going to have to spend a little more or search a little harder to find a proper keycap set that's going to fit completely. But this board does have south facing sockets, so no matter what combo of switch and cap you go with, you're never going to have to worry about interference. And because there's no aluminum in there and there's plenty of sound dampening, you're going to wind up with a great sounding keyboard. The only downside from a custom standpoint is that it only supports plate mount stabilizers, but the ones included still sound and feel really good. They're USB-C as well, plus VIA compatible for programming. They're also one of the few customs to support per key RGB lighting. They do make this in an upgraded aluminum version as well at a higher price point, but regardless of price, in my opinion, the entry is the one to go for. Now, if you can't get your hands on one of these, my favorite runner up for a starter chassis has got to be the GMMK 10 keyless from Glorious PC Gaming Race. Make sure you grab the white ice colorway because it has some enhancements you won't find in the standard version like upgraded stabilizers and USB-C. Thanks so much to Dimitri and the Hardware Canucks team for having me on today. Hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday. And until next time, stay up. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Big shout out to my man Dimitri for having me on today. And my favorite keyboard from 2020 is the HyperX Alloy Origins Core. This specifically with their new Aqua switches, which are really smooth and unique. So first up, I love its TKL form factor. That's my personal favorite. And I've just never been one to ever use a numpad. So the fact that I get to save some extra desktop space here with the compact form factor, always a plus. The board is made really well and it looks nice with the matte powdered coating to it. 
But like I said, what really sealed the deal for me and made this my favorite of the year are their own Aqua Switches. HyperX recently started making their own switches and these Aqua Tactiles are by far the smoothest I have ever tried. And I know you think of, you know, linears as being smooth, obviously. And as a tactile switch, they are pretty much on par with that, but you still get that tactile bump. Like it almost feels like a lubed palm stem, but you still do get that tactile response when you actuate the key. Here's a little sound test. I was just really happy to see them put out this new style of keyboard with their own switches. And with the standard bottom row and USB-C cable, that lets you then switch it out to your own custom keycap set and use your own custom cable if you want to possibly start to go down that rabbit hole of the custom keyboard market. I'm just really impressed with it for just $90. Great keyboard overall. Uh, but speaking of customs, one keyboard I keep coming back to is my Novel Keys NK65 Entry, which is an entry level custom keyboard. At just $95 for the actual case, plate, and PCB, this is a great starter to getting into customs. I have it here in the atomic purple color, which I think is a great throwback to the old like Game Boy days and stuff. They've made multiple different colorways as well, which is really cool to see. But for just 95 bucks, it's a great starter. All you need to do is buy your own keycaps and own switches. And I went the budget route. I got some Gateron milky yellow switches, lubed them, filmed them, and they sound incredible. And then to match the purple, I picked up a Gengar Artisan keycap just to kind of fit the theme even more. And like I said, it sounds great, looks really cool. It's got the RGB if you want it. And I'll give you a little taste of the buttery smooth lubed Gateron yellows. And that'll wrap it up for me. Thanks again to Dimitri. I'm Random Frank P. Have a good day. Really appreciate it, guys. This variety is definitely necessary, especially when it comes to keyboards and the fact that the NK65 was like the common denominator between the two means it's probably a really good product. Now, let's move on to my honorable mentions. The first one goes to the Extrify K4 RGB. It's the keyboard that's been on my editing desk since launch with this cool retro colorway, but on paper, it's really nothing fancy uh, and not really the most amazing value either at $99, nor is it the most custom TKL keyboard available. Like the cable is non-removable, the switches are not hot swappable, the keycaps are not PBT, but I love this keyboard for one reason. All the large keys have sound dampening installed underneath, so that makes a huge difference in how the keyboard feels and how it sounds. Take a listen. I also want to give a shout out to the new Rokat Vulcan TKL Pro. I think it is one of the coolest looking gaming keyboards on the market with those narrow floating keycaps. Even though they are ABS, the matte surface gives them a really nice feeling texture. The USB-C port is centered, can exchange your cables. The volume wheel is incredibly tactile, will give anything from Logitech to shame. The body is clean too, but has that Vulcan feel to it. And the optical Titan switches are rated at 100 million clicks with supreme stable Stabilizers. Seriously, the stabilizers on this keyboard are incredible. The switch travel is pretty smooth with that fast actuation, but there is some pinging happening with the larger keys. So it's not the quietest keyboard, but still the overall feeling is pretty nice. And the last honorable mention I have is the Logitech G915 TKL. Simply because it's the only low profile wireless TKL keyboard I would recommend, even though it is hella expensive at $230. But I love that they've added a USB compartment at the bottom, refined the aluminum edges a bit from the original, improved battery life with over 40 hours at full brightness. Plus we have that Bluetooth support for multi-device connectivity. However, they still kept the outdated micro USB port and the volume wheel is hella loose. I love the font on the keycaps, although because of the proprietary stem design with the kale switches, finding replacement is not as easy as on your standard MX stems. It's a really unique product because it's almost in its own category, wireless, TKL, low profile, super low latency. All right, so those are our keyboard picks for 2020. Let us know what you're using right now. And if you are planning to upgrade, I feel like keyboards is one of those things that you either collect or use for years. You know, you don't necessarily upgrade every 
however many times you might want to upgrade a mouse. Like I switch mice so often, but the keyboard is one of those stationary items for me. I switch audio more often than I switch keyboards. So yeah, you probably pick one and you stick with it. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video. Oh, and as Eber would say, spend responsibly.